onto the bikes, and it hasn't been the easiest start for Paulo Gonçalves in his 12th Dakar. The Portuguese veteran has been struggling with injury. It was outside the top 10 on day one and dropped another 14 minutes here. Similar story for Xavier de Sultre, who has lost 20 minutes in the first two stages. The Yamaha factory riders targeting the podium, but he's going to have to dig deep in the coming days to get back on track and finish the day in 13th. A few spectators getting to enjoy the Peruvian sunshine. Here's Juan Pedrero, who's heading up the check pace at Moto Racing Group. The Spaniard running about half an hour off the pace. Lorenzo Santolino is the highest place of the Sherco riders, Pedrero's former team. He's 13th overall and the leading rookie. Joaquim Rodriguez and Armand Monleon also fighting for the top 20, but they lost some time as well today. Ariel Mena is riding for Hero alongside Rodriguez. Last year's top rookie getting into his groove, but he's already 28 minutes down on the big guns. And speaking of the big guns, Pablo Quintanilla was back in the top five again today. The rock star energy Husqvarna rider with another solid ride. He currently sits fourth overall. Well, Toby Price was just ahead of Quintanilla on the stage, although he's just behind him in the overall standings. After all, KTM should never be underestimated in the bikes. 2016 winner Price came into the rally carrying a minor injury. The worst of it appears to be behind him, even if today was a bit tricky on the wrist. Yeah, it's a bit more brutal on the on the wrist than uh, yesterday. So, yeah, we're just trying to um, just trying to hold on to the guys and just uh, be able to judge off them to to know what's coming up and um, yeah, just trying to trying to maintain it as much as we can. Joan Barreda came in third to hold on to his overall lead. Having won the curtain raiser on Monday, the Honda man was able to follow the car tracks today and he only lost one minute and 41 seconds to the winner. This has been a very strong start for the Spaniard, who's determined to improve on his best results of fifth in 2017. But in the end, this one was a two-horse race with Honda's Ricky Brabeck and KTM's Matthias Vorkner battling for the stage victory. Now, the American was leading for most of the day but he was eventually pipped on the line by the defending champion. The margin of victory, just 22 seconds. I want to push every day, no matter what the next day's like. Uh, as far as like um, being smart and, and having a strategy, I just want to win as much as I can and hopefully make it to the end of the Dakar with a, with a good spot. So Vogner sending out a message to his rivals, claiming his fourth Dakar stage win with their three-pronged attack of former winners, Faulkner Price and Sam Sunderland. KTM are going to take some beating over the dunes. The Austrian are putting the hammer down, but he knows there's still a very long way to go. I don't know if it was so good decision that pushed, pushed that much, because I have to look how is the gaps, because sure, I don't catch so much time. But in the end, sure, it's good to, to have a stage win. But yeah, it's more long days coming. As usual, very little separating the top riders. Three minutes and 24 seconds between Walkner in first and Quintanilla in fifth. Yamaha's Adrian van Beveren dropping nine minutes as he came seventh. Bereda now leads Walkner by one minute and 31 seconds with Brabeck two seconds back. Quintanilla and Price round out the top five. Meanwhile, in the quads, Nicolas Cavigliasso extended his overall lead. The Argentine taking his second stage win in as many days, coming in over 11 minutes clear of his compatriot Gustavo Gallego. For the time being, Cavigliasso is on course to repeat Ignacio Casale's crushing win from last year in the quads. He is off to a perfect start as he looks to improve on last year's second place.